Today from the Global Lane, why former intelligence officials are losing their security clearances. Supreme Court confirmation hearings coming soon. What you may not know about nominee Brett Kavanaugh. A new prime minister in Pakistan. Will Christians finally see justice? And campaign finance laws violated. Could it mean an end to the Trump presidency? And it's all right here, right now, from the Global Lane. Washington politicians and members of the mainstream media lost their collective minds when former CIA director John Brennan lost his security clearance. Was President Trump justified in removing it? Will clearances be removed from other former government officials to prevent the spilling of the nation's secrets? Well, joining us to share some insights is journalist and author Ronald Kessler. Mr. Kessler has written extensively about the CIA, the FBI, and American intelligence agencies. His latest book is The Trump White House, Changing the Rules of the Game. So, Mr. Kessler, Brennan is now threatening to sue. Does he have grounds to get his clearance back? Brennan has absolutely no grounds uh, to win a lawsuit over his clearance. Uh, giving a national security clearance is totally discretionary. There is no absolute standard. Uh, Nothing he has done, uh, you know, either contributes to or does not contribute to um, a legal uh, lawsuit. Certainly, uh, Trump's action uh, sends a chilling message. But at the same time, uh, for a former CIA official to engage in such partisan, vituperative uh, rhetoric uh, against a sitting president is unprecedented. And um, the uh, fact is that he's actually more in demand on the talk circuit, so there's no infringement of his First Amendment rights. Give us a little background here. When did all this start, this policy of allowing former government officials to carry the clearances with them after they leave government? How And how do they use and abuse them? Well, this is a tradition that really goes back to the beginning of the CIA. Uh, and... Uh, the clearance may be used by a former official uh, if he wants to work for a, uh, an intelligence agency or an intelligence uh, contractor and, and wants to uh, still uh, have access to classified information. But in the end, it's up to the, that agency or that company whether they want to uh, engage that person. And of course, the Trump administration is not going to want to engage Brennan uh, for any kind of advice. So the whole thing is is really moot. Um, but uh, it's, it's just another sideshow in the Donald Trump uh, circus. Uh, I, as you know, I wrote the book, uh, The Trump White House, Changing the Rules of the Game. And part of uh, Trump's strategy is to just become the center of attention every single day on TV and in conversation. And that, <clears throat> in turn, enhances his power. And he will make sometimes outrageous comments uh, that make uh, some of us cringe. But at the same time, uh, he focuses attention on himself, and that gives him power. And that's one reason he's been so successful. If you look at the results, of course, they're amazing, whether on the economic side or the foreign affairs side, <clears throat> the bull market, uh, the uh, uh, tax cuts. Trump may pull the clearances of some others, not just Brennan. I, I know some people myself uh, who have security clearances. They've told me they'll likely lose them once they stop working for the government. Should that be the policy? Should that apply to everyone, former FBI directors, CIA directors, other top intelligence officials? You know, there's a good case to be made that, that they should not have clearances unless they actually are engaged by a government agency or by a company, in which case uh, that clearance can be uh, reinstated. Uh, they can do another background check. So what what is the big deal? Uh, this is really uh, sort of a perk. It, it really doesn't amount to anything. Um, and, and I think uh, the policy should be reexamined. I doubt if uh, Trump is going to revoke the rest of the... Uh, uh, gang of, of critics, um, but we will see. You never know with Trump. Well, talking about the gang of critics, what impact has the whole Russia investigation and the politicization of the FBI, Department of Justice, other intelligence agencies had on morale and the agents in the field? You know, FBI agents, for example, and CIA officers are used to being the subject of criticism day and night. Uh, a lot of it is unfair. And uh, they really are, you know, engaged 24 hours a day, 
working to protect us, and, and they don't really have much time or interest in watching TV and seeing the latest uh, bombast from one politician or another. So I don't think that that is a major concern. You know, on the politicization of the FBI, certainly we saw <clears throat> outrageous uh, conduct by uh, Strzok, by Page, by uh, uh, Comey after he left the FBI, uh, <clears throat> as well as uh, McCabe. Uh, but it, when it actually comes to the investigations, uh, there's no real indication of, of, of actual bias. Um, the inspector general report uh, made that conclusion. There is more to come on the Hillary investigation. Uh, so let's just uh, keep an open mind until some of these reports come in. Who, who do you blame for the politicization of the FBI? Comey, Brennan, Obama, Trump? I mean, not just the FBI, but the intelligence agencies. Uh, I wouldn't even... Say the intelligence agencies were were uh, involved in bias, but but um, the uh, certainly Eric Holder sent a message of of uh, uh, political uh, bias uh, throughout the Justice Department, and uh, now that we're finding out what Comey is all about, it, it it's hard to uh, imagine that some of his leanings didn't influence some of the decisions. Okay, Ronald Kessler, journalist, author and author of seven New York Times bestsellers, I understand. So thank you for being with us. Great to be with you. Thank you. Do you have osteoarthritis in one or both knees? If you have osteoarthritis in one or both knees, are you on Medicare, Obamacare, or other health insurance? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a prescription strength solution for osteoarthritis of the knees, covered by Medicare at little to absolutely no cost to you. We also offer a prescription strength topical pain relief ointment that can be used for pain experienced on other areas of your body. Our experienced staff will work with your doctor and handle all of your Medicare or insurance paperwork. Best of all, your prescription is shipped directly to your home for free. Will you qualify for a prescription strength solution for osteoarthritis of the knee or for a topical pain relief ointment covered by Medicare or private insurance at little or no cost to you? Find out for free by calling the Back and Knee Pain Center at 1-800-614-2053. That's 1-800-614-2053, 1-800-614-2053. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month and everyone in your household can use the same card. To get your free dental card information kit, call the number on your screen now and find out about the free vision and pharmacy coverage. Confirmation hearings for U.S. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh are now just days away. Leftists are finalizing plans for protests and a big media blitz against him. But moderates and conservatives argue Judge Kavanaugh is well qualified to sit on the Supreme Court. They say there's no good reason to deny him confirmation. Among them is legal analyst Kendall Coffey. Mr. Coffey is a former U.S. attorney from the Southern District of Florida. He worked alongside Kavanaugh in the Elian Gonzalez case. Kendall, thanks for joining us from our Washington bureau today. So what was your impression of Brett Kavanaugh back during that Gonzalez case? And how about since he's been on the U.S. Court of Appeals in D.C.? Well, I was deeply appreciative of his volunteering to join our effort. He came in at a very tough time for us. We lost the uh, appeal, the original appeal. And the next question was the Supreme Court of the United States. And I think... He and some of his colleagues, uh, who had not been involved in the case up to then, recognized that, that we would need their kind of help for the issues to fairly be presented to the Supreme Court. He volunteered his time. He was a brilliant lawyer, a magnificent colleague, and I was very, very grateful for his efforts. Interestingly, the issue in the Elian Gonzalez case, which is thought about as a, 
is a best interest of the father kind of case. It's actually an issue that is very much getting attention nowadays, a different issue, and that is the power of federal agencies. Do federal agencies have too much power to make law? And that, interestingly enough, was a key issue in the Elian Gonzalez case. But, Kendall, the National Archives refused to request by Senate Democrats uh, to provide them with documents about Judge Kavanaugh's tenure. Uh, now they're threatening to sue the National Archives. The Archives said 900,000 documents couldn't possibly be ready until at least October. Why this document request? We're talking maybe three, four times uh, the number of documents required for Elena Kagan, uh, Justice Roberts, or Neil Gorsuch. Is this uh, reasonable, unusual? Well, he's got a body of legal opinions as a, just, as a judge. So in a sense, he should be... It should be a pretty straightforward process to evaluate his work. The issue of going back into his years when he served as an attorney with the Bush administration may or may not be necessary. If, if what you're interested in how uh, well someone is qualified to be a United States Supreme Court justice, and if this individual was serving for years and wrote hundreds of opinions on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeal, many regard that as the second most prestigious court in this country, then you'd think his body of work as a judge would be enough to determine whether he should be a justice. Well, it seems like they're just digging for anything to try to block this uh, confirmation. Uh, he served in the George W. Bush White House and also on Ken Starr's legal team in the Whitewater investigation. So. How do you think that's being used against him to stop this confirmation? Well, it's fascinating to see how he has, by his own admission, grown and evolved since the Ken Starr years. He was a hard-charging prosecutor as a team member with Ken Starr, which, of course, as you know, investigated then-President Bill Clinton, ultimately wrote a very tough report. We all know what happened at the time. Since then, though, Brett Kavanaugh has taken a deeper look at whether that kind of investigation is good for this country, whether the Constitution really wants the President of the United States, the most important and powerful person in the world, to be hamstrung, distracted, basically uh, made less effective as the head of the free world because the President has to deal with subpoenas and investigations and a constant uh, drumbeat of issues with respect to an investigation. Brett Kavanaugh ultimately decided that that kind of investigation, even though he'd been a critical figure in the Starr investigation, wasn't good for this country. I think that will be an issue in the confirmation hearings. The argument's going to be that he is not going to, as a Supreme Court justice, uh, be in a position to fairly determine whether or not uh, Donald Trump should be subject to a subpoena. I think that that is not going to be a strong issue, and I think he could obviously solve the issue if he were to say he would recuse himself. But I, I think that uh, what it really demonstrates is maturity and wisdom. How many of us can be intensely involved in a position and in a, and in a career and at some point later on say, maybe we need to look at the greater good, maybe we need to rethink what happened? years ago. Well, I remember the White House when the announcement was uh, made that he was gaining the appointment. Uh, he said that uh, he keeps an open mind. Uh, I think that's one example of it. So, but any chance, we all remember the Robert Bork situation, any chance he'll be Borked? So what do you expect beyond what you just said uh, for those confirmation hearings? Any fireworks? I, I think his personal qualities will remind us much more of uh, Chief Justice John Roberts. Than, than some of those who have come before. He, he's extremely gracious and courteous and thoughtful and bright. I think people and the country watching the confirmation hearings are going to really like this guy. So, uh, you know, unless there's some prizes that none of us have thought about, uh, I think it's going to be very uphill to try to defeat his confirmation. Kendall Coffey, we thank you for your insights from Washington. Thanks for being with us. Okay, thanks for having me on. Attention Medicare recipients. If you are currently enrolled in Original Medicare, a Medicare Advantage or Medicare Prescription Drug Plan, the Medicare annual election period is officially here. Through December 7th, all Medicare recipients can shop for affordable monthly plan premiums 
on all Medicare Advantage plans, regardless of pre-existing conditions. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan with hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage combined together in a single plan that may include extra benefits such as hearing, dental, and vision for one affordable or, in some cases, a $0 monthly plan premium, regardless of your income. Medicare Enroll America will help you shop plans to find affordable prices and the right coverage for you, even if you're already enrolled in Original Medicare. Are you eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan and possibly a $0 monthly premium, regardless of pre-existing conditions? Call 1-800-590-2510. To speak with a licensed insurance agent now, call 1-800-590-2510. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-437-1859 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-437-1859 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-437-1859. Pakistan has a new prime minister. Imran Khan has been sworn into office. He's pledged to enact justice for all Pakistanis without discrimination. Pakistan's Christian minority is hoping their new prime minister will put his words into action. Several days before Khan took office, police ignored Christian pleas to locate and arrest the murderer of a 35-year-old Christian father in Lahore. Joining us from London with more is Wilson Chowdhury, the British Pakistani Christians Association. Wilson, so tell us what happened to this Christian man, husband, father. On the 15th of August, uh, a Christian father uh, of three children was about to celebrate his ninth anniversary to his wife. Uh, He went out to buy an anniversary cake for his wife and never returned home. Around 10 minutes later, a knock arrived on their door and young men informed the family that uh, Vicky Massey had been shot uh, and was needing help <clears throat> at a nearby Muslim man's home. When the family rushed there, they found him unlucid, basically. I mean, he, he was, he was fall, falling into a comatose state. Uh, a, a, there was blood everywhere. Uh, the Muslim man who had shot him was still in the house, ran off, uh, the, the family placed Vicky Massey onto a motorcycle and took him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Why, why, was, he, why was he killed, uh, Wilson? Do we know what the reason was? <laughs> the murder is shrouded in mystery. This man was a local neighbor. He was a Muslim man, but he is known to deal in drugs. Now, this Christian man wasn't a known drug user, so that's not what it's believed to be. He may have seen a crime. He may, or, 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 and that may well be why he will, he has been shot. Um, but you know the police haven't revealed any further details. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, this Christian man was simply going out to buy um, a cake on the way. Uh, he must have stumbled across this gentleman, was in his doorway and in visibly trying to escape because his legs were trapped inside the door as he got shot in a in the hip and bled to death. Yeah, maybe, maybe he saw a drug deal coming down or something. So how did the police react to this? What did they do? Absolutely nothing. Uh, initially, a call was made to the police. There was no response. Uh, later, um, when the family arrived uh, and, and after Vicky had been placed on the motorcycle and sent to Mayo Hospital, which was nearby, um, the, uh, the, the remnant of the family went across to the police station had to lobby them for around 20 minutes, uh, refusing to leave the station uh, for police officers to actually then come out with them to take uh, images and a short report on what what had happened. At that point, despite the blood on the streets and the eyewitness accounts, no FIR, so no charge, no no um, uh, um, uh, no initial 
uh, uh, investigation was was you know, took place. Uh, the the police did escort them to the hospital, uh, so no no initial investigation was registered. Um, the police did take them to the hospital, where they then uh, found that uh, Ricky Massey had been uh, pronounced dead. Um, they took a few witness accounts from the the two brothers that placed them on a motorcycle, and still had failed to register a first incident report. So there was um, no effort from the police to uh, go and pursue the perpetrator. Uh, so then how did the Christians react to this? Well, due to the reluctance of the police, the family, totally incensed, uh, placed the, the Ricky Massey into a coffin and they went to the local high street where they protested with over 250 to 300 other Christians. Um, absolutely no Pakistani Christian media took any interest except for one national paper that wrote one paragraph and claimed it was a local dispute without any uh, reason for that to be in the newspaper. Wilson, how typical is this that police don't help or respond at all to Pakistani uh, citizens, all Pakistani citizens, especially if they're not Muslim? Well, if, if you're Christian, it's very hard to register a police complaint or, or, or a or in, initiate an investigation, even if the crime is murder. Um, Christians often will have to take dead bodies out into the streets, block main roads, burn tires in the streets, protest until some police action takes place. Even then, it's not a guarantee. And often they then have to obtain a solicitor to actually challenge the police to do their job. I've never heard of this in any other country. It's very, it's a very bizarre situation. Um, but yeah, you can imagine most deprived Christians don't have the money for a solicitor. Hence, they take these dead bodies, these corpses, into the streets, allowing more decay before they're able to actually receive any solace and closure by burying their dead. And Wilson, quickly, we've got about 30 seconds. What can we do? Well, um, BPC has set up an appeal uh, where Christians who would like to help can donate towards the cost of the funeral for this family uh, and for the cost of a solicitor, because uh, um, it, it does seem as if uh, the lo this local drug lord uh, has been bribing police to turn a blind eye to crimes, uh, which is one of the reasons why we believe there's been there was extra reluctance despite um, you know the, the the large protest that happened in Pakistan. Okay, uh, Wilson we Chowdhury, we're, we're, we're out pray, of pray for justice. We will pray for justice, Wilson. We're out of time. Uh, British Pakistani Christians in London, thank you so much for joining us today. Need relief from backaches and stiffness in your hips or down your legs? Then you need Dr. Ho's Back Relief Belt, the innovative technology to support and decompress your spine. And now it's covered by Medicare. Every patient with back pain should be wearing this belt. Nothing gave me instant relief except for the Dr. Ho belt. Feel good while standing, walking, driving, doing housework, and while laying down. And now Dr. Ho's patented belt is available at our best price ever. It's even covered by Medicare. Order now to get the easy-to-use hand pump and back rehabilitation DVD free. You know, similar belts can cost you almost $1,000, but my belts won't cost you $500, not $300, not even $200. I will give you my special TV price. And remember, Dr. Ho's belt is covered by Medicare. If you know a friend or family member that suffers with pain, get them my system today. Help them live with less pain, be more active, and get back to doing the things they love. Give them the gift of health. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you receive your free Next Gen Income for Life quote to see how much guaranteed income you can get from Next Gen Annuity Strategies pioneer J.D. Melberg. These quotes use little-known strategies to show you how you may get up to 33% more guaranteed income in retirement. Using our exclusive strategies, Mary will get $9,000 of guaranteed income per year from her retirement savings, and John, over $36,000 per year for life. They'll never run out of money, no matter how long they live. So grab your phone right now, because we're about to offer you your free Next Gen Income for Life quote to see how much guaranteed income for life you can get. Call 800-346-4410 now for your free exclusive Next Gen Income for Life quote from a J.D. Melberg Insurance licensed agent. As a bonus, we'll include our complete Next Gen Annuity Strategies Info Kit absolutely free. The call is quick. The quote is free. Call 800-346-4410. That's 800-346-4410. Now that Donald Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, has pled guilty to eight counts of violating U.S. campaign finance laws, 
What's the likely fallout for the president? Could all of this Cohen drama lead to presidential impeachment? It all may depend on Cohen, what may or may not be revealed from phone recordings of his conversations with Donald Trump, and of course the outcome of this fall's midterm election. First, here's CBN News reporter Charlene Aaron to explain more about Cohen and his guilty plea. Eleven days before the election, Cohen paid off porn star Stormy Daniels, who claimed she had a one-night stand with Trump. The president initially said he knew nothing about it. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? Cohen said in federal court Tuesday that he made the payments in coordination and at the direction of a candidate for federal office. It's, it's not clear if right Trump broke the law, and legal experts say it would be hard to prove in court. Cohen's guilty plea could add to Democratic calls to impeach the president. Legal analysts say a sitting president cannot be indicted, but he can be impeached, which is a political, not a criminal response. Violation of election laws yeah. are regarded as kind of jaywalking in the realm of things about elections, uh, and there are so many of them. Every administration violates the election laws. Every candidate violates the election right. laws when they run for president. Dershowitz is right. Today, the Democrats are concerned about the Russians and Michael Cohen paying hush money to two women in violation of campaign finance laws. But how soon we forget Chinagate. Remember how the Chinese tried to influence the 1992 and 1996 presidential elections. Remember Charlie Tree, John Huang, and Johnny Chung, others? I remember it well because I reported about it from Washington. The Democrats didn't want an investigation because millions of dollars flowed to the Clinton campaign and the DNC. We'll never know the full extent of the election influence buying because then Attorney General Janet Reno refused to appoint a special counsel to investigate it all. Yes, Chinagate was really bigger then Monica Lewinsky. It could have led to President Clinton's removal from office. Now President Trump is facing a similar challenge. If recordings of his phone conversations with Michael Cohen reveal he ordered Cohen to use campaign funds to pay that hush money, Capitol Hill Democrats will have the smoking gun they need. They'll rally more members of their party, maybe Republicans as well, to join the impeach Trump parade. So far, there's no evidence of Russia collusion or that the president himself intended to violate campaign finance law. I know the president may be saying to himself, hmm, if only I hadn't had that one night stand with Stormy, none of this would be an issue. Remember, Mr. President, the Bible tells us our sins will be found out. Proverbs 10.9 says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Yes, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Donald Trump is no exception. The difference is he's the president of the United States. Everything he does is watched and exposed by his enemies. Folks, let's remember in this country, we're like Michael Cohen, considered innocent until proven guilty. That also applies to our president. So let's demand fairness and justice. Let's pray that our president and our, all of our leaders embrace truth and radiate integrity. Well, that's it from the Global Lane. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Twitter. Until next time, be blessed.